Okay, had some leftover rice from the other day and some leftover homemade chili. And we're going to dehydrate it and turn it into a dehydrated meal for our little trip we're going to be taking. So I'll keep you posted. I'm going to put this on our my Paraflex sheets. As you'll see, I have Paraflex sheets on here. I'm going to put them on here. And um, I'm going to put the dehydrator on 165. I might start it at a 155 and then turn it up to 165 just so it doesn't get what's called like hard cased where it's dry on the outside and then not so dry on the inside. Um, but because it does have meat in it, this chili does have meat in it, it's got ground beef. So I think I am just going to go ahead and put it on 165. And if I change my mind and do it lower and then change it, I will make sure and let you know. So I'll take you along as we go. Okay, the first tray I just mixed right in with the rice. Um, that way the rice won't be all dry and flying around and drying at 165 degrees and then the rest of it not. Now, I want to note that the meat in this chili was a very lean ground beef. It's a, actually a ground sirloin. So it was very lean. It wasn't like just your normal, I don't know what the other type of ground beef is, maybe a 70-30. You want to use as lean a meat as possible if you're going to dehydrate. Now, I didn't plan on dehydrating, so um, it's not like I purposely planned on the sirloin. The, I just used the ground sirloin because that's what I had. And the second tray is just the chili, and you'll see it's got carrots and tomatoes and other really good stuff in it. That's just the way we make chili sometimes. But um, make sure and spread it out as thin as possible. And, of course, it's only going to get as thin as the food is. The ground beef is not going to go any thinner. Um, so, and the same thing with the beans. I don't want them all smushed up and flattened. But, anyway, so I'm going to actually make three trays. I thought two would be enough, but I'm going to go ahead and make three because I want to make sure and give it enough space to get it good and dry. All right, tray number three coming up. Okay, and last tray. Um, this is such a great way to be able to use leftovers that you may not want to use, you know, because chili, you really don't want to eat chili three, four times in a week when you make a big batch. Um, and you really <laughs> All right, so I did put it on 155, not 165. Put it on 155 for the entirety, or so far. It's been in there for three hours, and uh, let's check it. Okay, this is after three hours, and you can see it's come quite a bit, but it's got a long way to go. Because some of them chunks of meat are pretty big, so. But turn it around. Smells good, that's for sure. The problem I had last time is I dehydrated chili and then mm, I'd eat it dehydrated because it was kind of good. So, alright, so three hours, it's getting there on the outside as usual dry because it dries faster on the outside, but the Excalibur circulates air around pretty well, so. Alright, I'm going to turn the rest of the trays, and when I say turn, I'm going to turn the food over on the trays, since it's got these mats underneath, it's not getting airflow like it would without them, so I'm going to do that, and, uh, Then we'll let it go for a while longer. Tray number two. That's what it looks like. Let's look at the tray with the rice. Yeah. See, and it's still got quite a bit more moisture because of the rice, too. So we'll let that go a little more. We won't really turn that one much. Okay. And there is the completed dehydrated chili. And we've got a nice size bag of it. So it tastes delicious. Mmm, even just like that. So there you go, quick meal, ready for the road.